Bonnies are at the big dance. First practice, man. We got our way. We got our way. This morning, we go live to Indianapolis. And what we do is good enough, fellas. Showing you all the action from the Marsh Madness bubble. Former men's basketball players sending well wishes from overseas. <laughs> Even the head of Barstool calling St. Bonaventure trendy. But everyone likes the Bonnie. The team is ready to rumble against LSU in less than 24 hours. Let's go, Bonnie! SBU starts right now. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, that music right there was getting me hyped this morning, Grace. Welcome to SBU TV this morning. My name's Nick Gallion. And I'm Grace Foley. And we begin today's exciting show with a preview of the Bonnie's first game of hopefully many in the big dance. SBU TV Sports' Mike Hogan is live in Indianapolis with everything you need to know about the tournament. Mike, over to you. Thanks, Grace. The NCAA tournament, Luby Soil Stadium, Indianapolis, Indiana. The atmosphere here downtown is pretty quiet this morning. It's also very cold. Uh, but as soon as the action starts up later this afternoon, I expect there'll be a little bit more energy downtown. As far as the St. Bonaventure Bonnies, from now it's five miles south of here. They look season. He was our leader. Smart um, afternoon. You know, he was really a big supporter of men's basketball, and that net was that's for him. That, that's for his family um, because he's been a big part of it. And I know Dennis is looking over us and and helping us, and hopefully he can really help us um, on Saturday at 1:45. Bonnie's made it clear that this run is dedicated. St. Bonaventure's men's basketball is no stranger to success. Former stars continue to show their support for the team. SVTV's Rich William talked to Bonnet alums to get their take on this year's squad. That's it. St. Bonaventure wins the Atlantic 10 tournament. Following the Bonnie's victory last Sunday, Many former players took to social media to congratulate the team. All-time Bonnies, including Jalen Adams and Andrew Nicholson, are a few of the alumni who shared their excitement after the win. I'm in the Riley Center on Bob Lanier Court, where many former Bonnies basketball players have come and had success. I talked to some of those players to get their take on the Bonnie shot this year in the NCAA tournament. Get back to that 18 tourney and, and win it. Yeah, that's something I, ain't, I, didn't, I didn't get to do, so I felt like I won a championship. I'm really, really happy for um, this team and excited that where they got in. And uh, just proud and proud to see all the, like, the growth they made and just seeing how – and just being happy for those guys to have that moment. And some alumni think the Bonnies can go far in the big dance. Go on, my boys, man. I, I, think, I think they can win it all. If we can ever get to this next round, I think we could shock a lot of people with Michigan. It's March, you know what I'm saying? Tell these people fix their bracket. The Bonnies is here. And if the Bonnies win on Saturday, be sure to look out for more reactions on social media. With SBU TV, I'm Rich Williams. Well, on your screens, we are going to bring you a live look at downtown Indianapolis. We had a few technical issues with Mike before, but just a few miles away from Lucas Oil Stadium, over 60 teams in a bubble for the NCAA tournament, including our very own Jaron Holmes. He brings you an inside look into the bubble. Welcome to the bubble. Let's go. First day in the bubble, we have to completely quarantine for a whole day, uh, we cannot leave this room. Uh, food will be brought to us, um, and we have to test negative tomorrow for COVID um, in order for us to practice and uh, begin team activities. We start with our wake up call at 9 30. After breakfast, we get our COVID test. Let's go get this test, man. This COVID test. This is our first of many COVID tests. We get tested every single day, and we have to do it ourselves. First practice, man. We on our way. We on our way. Trey, what's the word, Trey? What's the word, Trey? Stay out the way. <laughs> Stay out the way, Trey. <laughs> Walking into the weight room right now. 
right now. Let's see what they got. Hey man, so we done with our lift for the day. About to head to practice now. We took a bus ride to Indiana hey, University in Bloomington, which is about an hour and a half away to practice on the court we will play our first game on. When I walked through those gym doors, I just lost my breath. The gym was insane, crazy. After practice, we had to take care of academics. I mean, we are student athletes. Thank God dinner was after study hall. We were starving. <laughs> These guys are hilarious. <laughs> after dinner, we're finally done with the day. It's like 10 o'clock right now. And I just want to thank you guys so much for taking this journey with me inside the bubble with me and my teammates. I'm Jaren Holmes with SPU TV. Go Bonnies. Well, let's go Bonnas. That's usually the chant fans shower the RC with on game day. And although fans won't be allowed at the Bonnies game on Saturday, I sure found out this week that they'll be just as hyped. Even our friends in the Friary will uh, be hyped up for this game. So let this display get you hyped up this morning. Let's go Bonnas! The Bonnies are back in the NCAA tournament. They face 8 seed LSU in the tournament's first round. There's a lot of different energy around campus right now. Take Bonna freshman and Bonna newcomers, Ryan Sermay and Matt Bronco, who experienced their first Bonna game as part of the Bonna student section last Sunday in Dayton. They traveled from here to here for their first experience in a Bonna student section. It was, I feel like it was like a sneak peek for the next four years. That's something to look forward to. This weekend, the group is taking it a bit easier. Uh, if you're here watching the projector in our room, maybe get some chicken wings. Furthermore, veteran Bana fans, like our friend Dom Greco. My <laughs> the energy in Dayton last Sunday was reminiscent of the RC. We were pounding on seats, doing whatever we could that we always do with the RC. Even people from different Atlantic 10 schools. No, so Dom Greco. VCU fans came up to me. I just had uh, some Dayton fans also come up to me or say something to me that was there. And if fans are allowed at any NCAA tournament Bonnie games, the beer hat will be there too. If you see the Bonnies are fans, I, I would expect seeing Captain Beer there. But it's not just students that are hyped for the game. Wait, a fryer on a basketball court? I played, uh, so basketball, I played football, I played lacrosse. The Friars are excited for the game. I feel like it's brought me even more um, into the spirit of St. Bonaventure. The Friars might even have a little watch party of their own on Saturday. I imagine that we'll be getting together to watch it and, and to, cheer on, um, to cheer on the team. This is what makes fans go. Let's go Bonas, baby. Let's go Bonas! Let's go Bonas! For SBU TV, I'm Nick Gellion. And it's not just Bonaventure stu students hyped up for the game. Fans across Olean are showing their support for the team. SBU TV's Nikai Santiago talked to some local business owners about their support for the brown and white. Local businesses here in Olean have been showcasing their support towards St. Bonaventure's men's basketball team during their historic tournament run. Restaurants like Mia Gelato Cafe Renna's Pizza, AJ Subs Pizza and Grill, and Bonna alum on Bar The Burton put their support to the Bonnie's men's basketball team on full blast. I spoke with owner of AJ Subs, Mike Jager, who spoke to me about his excitement for the game on Saturday. LSU seems to have a very outstanding offense, and we have one of the top defenses in the country, uh, so I'm interested to see that matchup. If we can lock them down, uh, we got a very good chance to win. Over at the Burton, I spoke with General Manager Daniel Gleason. Gleason stated how the Burton has been supportive of the Bonnies for over 60 years. Gleason also explained plans to watch the game for fans this Saturday. We have a reservation system set up because we've got to limit capacity. And uh, yeah, so uh, I think it would be pretty loud, pretty rowdy, that's for sure. I asked both Jager and Gleason for some words of encouragement for the Bonnies' big game against LSU. Stay strong, stay committed, um, just keep doing what you got, got you here. Um, it's worked so far, no reason to change anything. And uh, just leave it all out on the court, and they'll do great. Play like you've been playing. Mm -hmm. Play hard and play with your heart, and I think they'll be fine. After speaking with General Manager Daniel Gleason, I was actually informed that by Friday morning, there will be a 16 by 16 foot banner for the Bonnies, supporting them for their game on Saturday. I'm Nakai Santiago, SBU TV, new, now, next. If you're looking to watch the game this Saturday against LSU on campus, there are plenty of options to go on campus. Go and catch the action at the Hickey Dining Hall. 
the Ratzkeller, Walsh Amphitheater, or the Riley Center. The game begins at 1.45 p.m. When we come back, we take a look at the story behind the viral photo of a Bonn photographer in a chokehold. And changes are on their way for one of St. Bonaventure's oldest buildings. Stay tuned. But first, before we go to break, we are headed to Indy this morning. Take a look at Lucas Oil Stadium. We're taking a look right now, Grace, at the Final Four banner in front of Lucas Oil Stadium in, Stadium in Indianapolis. It's, it's good to be back. It's good to be it's back. It's good this to March, be back, Grace. and hopefully we'll see those Bonnies in the Final Four. Stay tuned. Hey, world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. When not in your hand trying to text somebody back, because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Every day, millions of people are connecting. Father. Cosplayer. Mentor. Actor. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make us stronger. If doctors, nurses, and grocery store clerks can wear a mask for 10 or 12 hour shifts, you can wear a mask for an hour or less when you go to the store. Do your part. Be New York tough. Mask up America. What to expect when you're expecting? Like you? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to teen-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. I don't think we're free in this country. For a hundred years, you saw black people menaced and targeted and lynched and beaten and brutalized. I think we're burdened by this history. More people have to be willing to do that uncomfortable, inconvenient thing that justice requires for things to get better. Truth can inspire change. Learn more at EJI.org. Welcome back. Viral video this week? Have you seen it? At Sunday's game against VCU, St. Bonaventure basketball videographer Nathan DeSutter is seemingly put in a chokehold by a security guard at the University of Dayton. This during the Bonnie celebration of their Atlantic 10 championship victory. As he attempted the, to video the win, DeSutter was approached by a security guard to get off the court, but he continued to record. The security guard then put DeSutter in a chokehold and walked him off the court. St. Bonaventure players and coaches stopped the celebration to help DeSutter. The security guard told the players and coaches he was asked five times to get off the court. He didn't know DeSutter worked for the team and he was let back onto the court. The picture has more than 290,000 views on Twitter. All season long, videographers and photographers were allowed access to the court and locker room. Photographer Griffin Quinn, who took the uh, photo, said the security guard must have mistaken him for the media. A-10 commissioner, Drew Dickerson, said they are going to continue to look into the incident. COVID-19 numbers rise over the week, both in the county and here on campus. Checked minutes ago, active cases within Cattaraugus County are over 100 again. Almost 4,600 cases, total cases, I should say, since the pandemic began a year ago. COVID-related deaths climbed to 90. Here on SBU's campus, active cases increased to 10. 48 people have recovered, bringing the total number of cases since the beginning of the semester to 58. This week, another new update from the St. Bonaventure University on the new search for the new university president. Tom Missile, SBU's communications officer, said in a statement Wednesday that the board hopes to find a new president by the summer of 2022. Meanwhile, University Provost Dr. Joe Zimmer will remain acting president until its successor can be found. 
St. Bonaventure students donated blood this week as a blood drive comes to campus. 70% of Western New York's blood supply is supplied by Connect Life's blood drives. Connect Life came to campus this Tuesday and collected blood for, from students willing to donate. Connect Life distributes the blood locally in Western New York and blood drives are in need more donors now than ever since the start of the pandemic. It's been very, very difficult, especially with COVID, to collect the blood we need. Connect Life is a local blood bank. All blood collected through us stays local, so we really do depend on the local community just to make sure that the hospital patients have the blood that is needed from them. According to the FDA, respiratory viruses are not known to be transferred by giving blood. If you'd like to help the cause, there will be Connect Life Blood Drive event at the Cattaraugus County Olean Building between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Thursday, March 25th. To learn more or find other times and locations, go to connectlife.org. St. Bonaventure University plans to renovate Plasmon Hall, receiving just under $3 million in grant money from New York State's HECAP program. Ann Lehman, SBU's Associate Vice President for Grants and Research, applied for the grant last August and recently received approval. They'll be pretty extensive and, and they'll most likely be done on a floor by floor basis because we need to be able to keep using that building while it's being renovated. Most of the heavy construction will be done over the course of summers, probably multiple summers. Lehman said the renovations included tech upgrades and air conditioning throughout the building. Although there isn't a set completion date, Lehman confirmed that construction could begin this summer. Next up on SBU TV, an update on the Atlanta shootings and a recap of what's going on in Europe with the AstraZeneca vaccine. Stay tuned, SBU TV will be right back. Barstool Sports President Dave Portnoy gives SBU a special shout out as the Barstool staff fills their March Madness bracket. Check it out. St. Bonnie's. My experience is that's like the trendiest pick there is, which never works, but everyone likes the Bonnies. The game Saturday is at Assembly Hall at Indiana University, with the tip-off set for 145. If the Bonnies win Saturday, they go on to play the winner of Michigan versus Texas Southern game. Hi. Um, can I get the now bar, please? No problem. One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hi, can I get a now bar, please? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. One dollar. Thanks. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Hey, uh, let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. You got it. How's it going? Can I get a now bar? Hey, stop right there! <laughs> Regardless of where you are on your path to retirement, you can still take charge of your financial future today. Visit aceyourretirement.org and answer a few questions from Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. For free tips, resources, and advice customized for your situation to help you feel confident and prepared for retirement. Retirement looks different for everyone. Make sure you're prepared for your financial future at aceyourretirement.org. I may never have met you. We don't go way back. Maybe we wouldn't even be friends if we did. But when you wear a mask, you have my respect. Because your mask doesn't protect you. It protects me. I wear my mask to protect you. Be New York tough. Mask up, America. Thank you.
President Joe Biden speaks on the investigation into the sexual harassment allegations against New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. During an interview with ABC, Biden states, should the investigation confirm the claims of the women, Cuomo should resign and there is a possibility for prosecution as well. Seven sexual misconduct accusations made against Cuomo in the past month. He denies any wrongdoing against the women making these claims and still has no plans to resign. This morning, authorities are investigating why a suspected gunman killed eight people in three Atlanta area spas and whether the massacre that left six Asian women dead can be prosecuted as a hate crime. The shooting started around 5 p.m. Tuesday at Young's Asian Massage in Cherokee County, Georgia, leaving four people dead. Then at Gold Massage Spa, about 30 miles from the first shooting, police discovered three Asian women killed there. Across the street at Aromatherapy Spa, another Asian woman killed. Robert Aaron Long is behind bars and currently charged with eight counts of murder. Grief and outrage growing over the rise in attacks against Asian Americans since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. At the White House, President Joe Biden also condemned the acts of violence. No matter the motive, Georgia State Representative Sam Park says the shooting is spreading fear, not only here, but in Asian American communities across the country. The European Medicine Agency said Thursday that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is, quote, safe and effective in preventing COVID-19. This conclusion comes after an EU regulator conducted an emergency review of the vaccine because a number of people who were vaccinated reported blood clots. Dozens of European countries halted the use of the vaccine while they waited for Thursday's ruling. Spain approves physician-assisted suicide on Thursday. This law permits those who have serious chronic illness with no chance of recovery and with unbearable suffering to request assistance from a doctor to end their life. Anti-euthanasia protesters hit the streets this week. The law goes into effect in three months. Spain becomes the first union country to pass this law. Eight states within the U.S. and Washington, D.C. have physician-assisted suicide laws. Coming up, we take a look at how the Bonnies are feeling about their NCAA tournament bid with Mike Hogan live in Indianapolis. Also, we preview the Bonnies' first round matchup with LSU set to tip off tomorrow afternoon. All that and more in sports. Stick around. But before we go to break, Grace, um, oh shoot. Before we go to break, Grace, we are going to enjoy this highlight of the men's basketball team as they head into their matchup on Saturday. And also before we head to break, we're going to take another live look, Grace, at downtown Indianapolis, where we see Lucas Oil Stadium, where the Final Four is going to take place and where first round NCAA games start today. It's going to be a fun time, Grace. I'm excited. It's going to be so exciting. Stay tuned as we give you that all in sports. People do some pretty cool things in their 40s and 50s. Why should saving for retirement be any different? So wherever you are in your retirement savings journey, head to aceyourretirement.org and start chatting with Avo today. That's aceyourretirement.org. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Observe the domesticated human family in their natural habitat, known to their species as the backyard. Oh, you think I should light it now? I think it's him. Yeah. Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall, which can start a wildfire. Wait, could it be? 
Blimey, oh, it is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. Hey, it's Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. Watch as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. No, you, you, see, no, you can't make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note right. of our fearless furry friend here, yes. humans. I appreciate it. Chris Bump. <laughs> Watching you. Smokey's done it again. Bye, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to SBU TV this morning. We hope you've had fun with us this morning because this is the week, the next couple of weeks, that Tommy Valentine lives for. Let's go over to Tommy now with sports. And you're absolutely right, Nick. 709 days. That's how long college basketball fans, including myself, have waited for the return of the NCAA tournament, and it's finally here. The four playing games were held last night, so the field of 68 is officially set. First round games tipping off in just under two hours. St. Bonaventure fans, of course, have to wait until tomorrow to see their team in action, but the anticipation for the game is palpable, both from the fans and the players. And for more on that, let's bring back in Mike Hogan, who's live from Indianapolis. Mike, we've talked about the historical implications of this game for the program, but what does this year's NCAA tournament bid mean for the players? Apologies to all for the technical difficulties here in Indianapolis. It's been windy and cold all morning. Thank you to them coming out of high school. Kyle Lawson actually said this week that his dad reminded him that he was never supposed to be here. Now, he's on the brink of playing in his first ever NCAA tournament game tomorrow afternoon when the Bonnie take on LSU. It's definitely a spotlight game. I feel like all of our guys know that. Uh, and then, like I said, good players uh, live up to these moments. Uh, you don't shy away from these moments and they have a lot of great players. So I know a lot of people will be watching this game and I just want to uh, get St. Bonaventure uh, name even more than that. Of course, none of those numbers mean anything to Bona coach Mark Schmidt. He said this week that he's been preparing for LSU the same way he pre prepares for any other team. For a preview of the matchup, we're going to send it back to Tommy Valentine and Sports. So long from Indianapolis, I am Mike Hogan. And it's a matchup of two teams with drastically different playing styles. St. Bonaventure, slow, methodical, defense-driven. LSU, they like to get out and score, and they have the pieces to do just that. We know it's, you know, it's a Southeast Conference team. It's, they're really athletic. They're really skilled. They've got a couple of pros, you know, first-round picks on their, uh, in their starting five. So it's almost like an you know, NBA type of, of style of play, a lot of ISOs and you know, but it's, it's a challenge that we're looking forward to. One of those future first round draft picks might just be LSU's Cameron Thomas. The electric freshman averages over 20 points per game. He's the one in the one-two punch that makes up the Tigers' backcourt. The other perimeter star is Javante Smart. Smart can dial it up from deep. He's shooting 42% from beyond the arc and was a member of that 2019 Sweet 16 team. But St. Bonaventure offers a few players capable of lighting up the scoreboard as well. All five of their starters average in double figures in scoring. The Bonnies want to keep it a low scoring affair, but the leader of that group believes they can keep pace with LSU's high octane offense if needed. Obviously the goal is to keep it a low scoring game, uh, grind it out on defense event, but I feel like we have um, five players that can um, just have a big game any given night. Scoring just sometimes is not there, but I feel like in just, uh, moments like this, a uh, good player shine and I feel like we have good players. Aside from playing sound defense, Coach Schmidt laid out controlling tempo as a key to slowing down the eighth-ranked offense in the nation. And the Tigers aren't just guard-heavy. Forwards Darius Days and Trenton Watford combined to average nearly 30 points per game and over 15 boards per game. Schmidt highlighted the rebounding margin and paint battle as points of emphasis for his team. Suffice to say, the Bonnies will have their hands full with the Tigers tomorrow. Few people know the significance of a trip to the NCAA tournament and what it means to a program like St. Bonaventure better than the players who have been there before. They'll tell you themselves it's an experience like no other. 
and similar to that 2018 team that knocked off UCLA in the first four, this year's squad is pitted against a formidable power five foe. LSU is just a point and a half favorite, but that does put St. Bonaventure in the underdog role. Now that's nothing new for this Bonnie's team. In fact, it was the same situation Idris Taki and his teammates found themselves in three years ago, and it made the win that much sweeter. At Bonaventure, all we do is eat, drink, and sleep basketball. It was like so many things that I could see after that clock hit zero. It was a great experience. Just really knowing how hard and how much work we put in. It was so surreal, like I can't even put it into words. Mark Schmidt has commended his team all year on their work ethic. We'll see if that translates to success tomorrow against LSU, as it's done for much of the season. CBS's Carter Blackburn will be on the call tomorrow with the game airing on TNT. Blackburn covered the March Madness heroics of Murray State's Ja Morant in the 2019 tournament that included a 12-5 upset of Marquette. Clearly, he has an appreciation for quality mid-major play, but even though St. Bonaventure does qualify as a mid-major program, Blackburn doesn't think that label properly defines this Bonnie's team. Just because the A-10 isn't recognized by, you know, a, a whomever as a, as a quote unquote power. Like, that's ridiculous. It's a great basketball league. I don't think anybody who knows college basketball is is sloughing off on the Bonnies because they're they're very dangerous team. We on the call with Debbie Antonelli and Evan Washburn. Bonaventure LSU is one of four first and second round games he'll be broadcasting. And keep an eye out on our Instagram and Facebook pages. We'll be posting the full interview with Carter Blackburn right after the show. Let's finish now with some SBU TV sports trivia this morning as we bring it back to a previous NCAA tournament. Back in the day, the Bonnies had their fair share of deep runs in the big dance that were fueled by some memorable performances, which got us thinking this week, who holds the program record for most points in an NCAA tournament game and who did that performance come against? It's actually a, two, a tie between two St. Bonaventure all-time greats. Fred Crawford scored 34 in a win against Rhode Island in 1961. Seven years later, Bill Butler tied the record in a win against Boston College. And we've got another first-time trivia winner. Congratulations to Tom Boland from Apple Valley, Minnesota. Be sure to stay tuned into our social media pages this weekend. We have all sorts of tournament coverage headed your way. Highlights, sound bites, and feel free to let us know where you're watching the game from tomorrow. Enjoy the action, folks, and go Bonnies. Grace, Nick? All right, well, I'm not sure I'm going to be watching the game uh, this weekend, Tommy. But before we say goodbye this morning, let's take a peek at your screens right now for our social media accounts. A big weekend for our Bonnies. Allow SBU TV to keep you updated on all news surrounding Bonaventure, Cattaraugus County, and national news. Give us a follow. Grace, I am, I am looking forward to this weekend. All right. So what do you think is going to be the key to this game for the Bonnies? You know, they have to play the game that they always play. They have to have defense. They have to slow down LSU. They're a high high-paced team, just like Tommy said. And, you know, I think the Bonnies can definitely pull out a win tomorrow. I agree. Thank you for joining us this morning on SBU TV. We really appreciate it and enjoy the game on Saturday. And as we go to break, Grace, we are looking live at Indianapolis here, again at Lucas Oil Stadium, where the Final Four is going to be played. That's so exciting, and like I said last time, hopefully our Bonnies will make it. Thank you for joining SBU TV. See you next Friday.